Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'm going to be growing Eucalyptus regnans, also known as Mountain Ash. Now this tree is quite unusual. These are the seeds that you're seeing at the moment. They're very, very small seeds. Um, I'll just bring a pen, into, a ballpoint pen into shot so you can actually see the size of them. There's the ballpoint pen for scale. So as you can see, they really are like little specks of dust. So this is quite an interesting tree for, for several reasons. Partly the, the size it grows to and also the, the growing conditions it needs. So as I say, it's type of Eucalyptus. But unlike most kinds of eucalyptus, it doesn't grow in a hot kind of desert environment. You often think of eucalyptus, you think of Australia, you think of a tree that can grow in hot, arid conditions. This eucalyptus is not one of those eucalyptus. This is one of the ones that grows in quite cool, temperate locations. So, so that's one of the interesting things about this, this eucalyptus tree. Other interesting thing is it is potentially the world's tallest tree. They have specimens in Tasmania that are over 100 meters tall, and they reckon that there could have even been specimens over 130 meters tall, potentially, uh, 100 years ago before they were all cut down, but they weren't measured when they were cut. They were just uh, clear felled for forestry timber and they weren't measuring all the heights. So it is potentially the biggest tree in the world. It could actually be quite a bit taller than the giant sequoia trees and giant redwoods in California, but they don't grow to that great age. They only grow to about 500 years and they have quite slender trunks. So they're very fast growing trees. They get to that height very quickly. It's not like the, the giant sequoia trees, which can be over a thousand years old. So when it comes to growing this tree, again, it's quite uh, a tricky tree to grow actually. It does grow very tall and the conditions it likes to grow to that height are quite hard to find around the world so it is a temperate plant as I say so it doesn't like hot tropical conditions it also doesn't like dry conditions it needs to have lots of rainfall it needs to have cool temperatures but at the same time it doesn't do well with hard frost so most places in the world where you have cool temperatures you'll probably also get a hard frost in the winter time whereas that would kill this tree so the only place this really grows is is kind of oceanic climates so the UK is not a bad climate for it if you're on the coastal parts of the UK, because this can only take down to about minus 10, which rules it out of most inland areas of the United Kingdom. So coastal areas in the UK can probably grow this, but then most of the UK is actually too dry, so you could probably only really grow this on the western side of Scotland and Wales. The rest of the UK is a bit dry for this, and it would actually struggle quite a bit. And other places it might do well is like the Pacific Northwest in, in, in America, where you have loads of rain and cool temperatures. But again, if it's too far north, you've got the frost issue. So it is quite a narrow uh, environmental range that this grows. And because it is such a tall, slender tree, a lot of those places, it isn't the best when it comes to strong winds. And a lot of those places that I've just mentioned get very strong stormy conditions. So as I say, it's quite a difficult one to grow. But I'm going to be trying to grow it here in Scotland. So I'm probably just going to grow this as an annual. I'm going to grow it in my garden just to get that nice rapid growth. It's one of the fastest growing trees in the world. It needs to grow two meters a year. It'll be interesting to see it growing over the summer. If it survives one winter, we have a mild winter, it might survive. It'd be nice to see it grow a second year. But I'm never going to let it get too big. If it does so happen to be hardy and it likes my environment, I will cut it down when it gets to about five or six meters in height. Because I have a small garden, I want to keep it manageable. I don't want it to get out of control. When it comes to germination, there's a few things we need to keep in consideration. We need to make sure that this goes through a temperate condition that would simulate what it gets in the wild. So basically with this tree, what happens in the wild is there's lots of seeds are shed generally after a wildfire and they fall down to the forest floor, but they'll sit there and they won't germinate until they get some good light levels. So I need to make sure that this is on the surface of the compost with good light levels to make sure it germinates. But also this is a temperate plant and it won't germinate at any time of year. It needs to wait until springtime. And the only way that the seeds know that it's springtime is to go through a cold period. So once they're damp and laying on the compost, I'll put them through a cold period. I can do this in the fridge. It's March at the moment and so temperatures are often around freezing or just above freezing. So I'm going to have this either in my conservatory or in my shed depending on how cold it is. I do want to avoid frost but temperatures around 5 degrees would be ideal. And I'm going to be having it like that for about a month. Then after one month, I'll be taking it to a warmer location. Temperature is about 20 degrees, 25 degrees Celsius with good light levels. And that should encourage germination. So I'll go ahead now and I'll start sowing these seeds and I'll show you the setup I'll be using. So because these seeds need light to germinate, they'll be on the surface of the compost. And one of the big problems with that is the compost can dry out very fast, especially if I'm letting it get some daylight or even some direct sunlight. It could dry out within half an hour and then the seedlings could die. So what I need to do is make sure that they're nice and damp. So that's why I'm going to be using a takeaway tub. It's clear so I can let the light through even when the lid's on. And when I put the lid on, we've got a nice sealed environment that makes sure it stays nice and humid. What I'll probably do though, is I'll probably not completely seal it, I'll probably just have it slightly ajar to keep the humidity up, but also allow oxygen to get in. If it's completely sealed, what can happen is the compost can start to decompose 
that will absorb all the oxygen out of the environment. And although plants absorb carbon dioxide and produce oxygen, they only do that when they're photosynthesizing. And they're just like any other living organism, they need oxygen to survive. Without it, they'll actually suffocate. So I need to make sure that some oxygen can be let in, and that's why I'll be leaving this ajar. Once they've germinated and they have green growth, it's actually okay to let them be completely sealed because they'll produce their own oxygen. But before that, I can't completely seal it because there's a real risk that they could actually suffocate. Not such a big risk when I have the cold treatment because when it's cold, the growing substrate won't absorb too much oxygen, but it is an issue when I'm trying to germinate them in the warmer conditions. So I'm just gonna be using coir for this. Coir is sterile, so I know there's gonna be no weed seeds in here, and there shouldn't be any kind of like nasty fungus or bacteria, which could potentially cause any rotting issues with the seeds either. So I'm just gonna sow a nice thin layer of coir down here. And I'm just going to gently tamp it down just so it's a nice even layer, but I'm not going to compact it too hard because I do want to make sure the roots can grow through just fine. And also uh, this coir is also damp as well, so I don't need to worry about too much watering after this has been put down. And I'll just pick out any hard or large lumps that I see in there as that will stop the germination of the, of the seeds. So I've got a nice smooth layer now, I'm just going to sprinkle the seeds on top. It's quite difficult to do, as I say the seeds are really really quite small, so what I'm going to do as you can see them there on my, my palm of my hand, but they quite easily stick to your finger when you put your finger on them. And I'm just going to do that and just gently sprinkle them over the surface, making sure they are indeed on the surface of the compost and not buried, as later on when it comes to germinating them, they will need that light exposure to germinate properly. So that's the seeds all sown. What I'm going to do now is, to, is get a very fine mister and spray some water over the surface, make sure this is nice and damp and that it's damp enough for the plants to germinate. I'm then going to cover this up to make sure that it stays damp, put it in a cold environment for about one month, and then what I'll do is I'll put this on a sunny windowsill in my house, which will be around 20 degrees Celsius, so the perfect temperature for germination. I'll keep a close eye on it, and we'll see what the germination success is like in a couple of months' time, when this should hopefully be germinating and growing. So it's now six weeks later, and as you can see, we've had two that have germinated. So these germinated a lot earlier than I was expecting. The reason being, I was trying to give them the cold period to break their dormancy, but we had a slightly warmer spell and these were my conservatory at the time because I didn't want them outdoors as it was quite hard frost. I didn't want them to freeze. So what happened is it was cold at night with hard frost but quite warm in the day and it was quite sunny in the conservatory and it got quite warm. So these two germinated quite quickly. Now none of the other seeds have germinated yet so I think more will germinate. But now it's too late in the year for me to get cold temperatures in my conservatory so what I will do is I'm going to pot these two out into individual pots and then with the remaining seeds I'll put them into the fridge for a month and then bring them back into the warmth and that will hopefully get the rest of the seeds to germinate. But as I say, two of them are germinated so far. The growth has been very slow though, even though these are actually germinated probably about four weeks ago. They just kind of sat there not doing much. This one on the, on the right has still got its, uh, its seed leaves. This came up about two weeks ago, the one at the back which came up four weeks ago you can see has actually got some secondary leaves coming, but it's still a very small plant even with those secondary leaves coming. So it's now time to transplant these out because this is just growing in coir. There's absolutely no nutritional value for the plants, just for holding moisture. So they're not gonna really grow unless they get some feed that they can absorb from the soil. So I'm gonna move these now into their own individual pots and then hopefully the rest of the, the seed will germinate once they get another cold treatment. So I'm just going to pop these seedlings into individual 9 centimeter pots. This should be fine for the first few weeks, maybe the first few months, just depends how fast these plants actually grow. Hopefully being eucalyptus we're going to have some rapid growth, but it's hard to tell. So I'm just going to go in here, just go well to the side and just try and scoop up a good bit of soil with this so that it's got all the roots. And then I'm just going to very carefully place this into the pot, you guys see a little bit of root coming out there and here. So it looks like what it's been doing, instead of putting on much top growth, it's actually been putting a lot of growth into its roots. This is probably partly because some plants do this, they put a lot of growth into their roots before they start to put any growth on the top. The other reason this, it might be doing this is there's absolutely no nutrition in this compost, so it can't really grow anything at the top because there's no food for it. So its roots are searching, it's putting all its energy into its roots until it gets enough nutrition that it can grow its leaves. So hopefully, once it goes into this pot here, which is a, a rich multi-purpose compost, which has plenty of feed in it. This should spur on to actually grow. So I'm just gonna hollow out here because I have got a little clump of soil with this. I'm gonna carefully place that down, put a little bit of compost around the edge. I have to be very careful because it is actually very delicate at this stage. But the roots should then spread down 
get into the compost which has feed in it and then we should get some decent growth hopefully. So that's two seedlings now potted up. What I'm going to do now is put these into my conservatory because it's nice and humid, there's no wind, it won't be too much of a shot going from that sheltered environment. And before I potted these out, what I was doing is I was taking the lid off this during cloudy days to get them used to being in a less humid location. That way there won't be such a big a shock that they're now out in the open. So as I say, I'll keep them in my conservatory where it's sheltered. Then once they're growing strongly, I'll start to harden them off and I'll bring them outside probably around late May, maybe early June. Just depends how our weather's doing this year and if we get some nice warm weather without too much strong winds, they can then go out and they can start growing outdoors. Now being this kind of eucalyptus, they do need some highlight levels to grow well. So. The sooner I get them outside, the better. I just have to weigh the, the risks up with the colder temperatures and also strong winds that we might get. So I'll see you guys later on at the end of the video when hopefully we've got some more germinated and these ones have started to take off and put on some serious growth. So it's now two months later and as you can see this plant here has started to grow quite well. Unfortunately the second seedling did die off and actually this plant really didn't grow much at all for a long long time. For a good month it just kind of sat there not growing much just put on a tiny bit of leaf here and there. Then I had a caterpillar which came and destroyed some of the lower leaves, so it was really set back quite badly. And only about a week or two, it was only probably about this kind of height. And then in the last week, it's just completely taken off and it's growing really, really fast. So it's definitely got established now and it's in the rapid growth phase. The only other thing I would say about it is it's really thin, the stem. So you can see it's really, really quite a very thin stem for the size of the plant. Um, might be partly due to the growing conditions without much wind. You know, it's thinner within the conservatory. But what I'm going to do now is going to put it outside in my garden and see how it grows. It is multi-stemmed at the moment, so it might grow a little bit more like a shrub at first. If it continues to grow like a shrub, I'll prune it down and just have the one stem. But I'll put it in my garden, I'll see how it does. Unfortunately, they don't transplant that well, so I might not be able to transplant it in the winter to protect it. And I'll give you guys an update towards the end of the summer and we'll see how much it's grown. I suspect it should put on some quite rapid growth now that it's really got into the growing phase and as it likes my climate, particularly my summer climate, it should grow really quite well for me. So I'll put it in the garden today and I'll see you guys at the end of the summer and we'll see how much growth it's put on. So it's now several months later, it's actually the end of November and this is the eucalyptus plant here and it's grown quite well over the summer but it could have grown a lot better. This was growing in my tropical bed. If you're wondering why this looks like a big pile of compost, this is my tropical bed and I mulch it with lots of plant material to stop the frost killing my tropical plants in the ground. So this was growing here, it was surrounded by some hardy begonias and I didn't realize how fast the hardy begonias were going to grow and they actually swamped this and this was actually completely smothered for most of the summer. So it's grown quite leggy and it hasn't done particularly well. It has grown about a foot in height and it was looking quite healthy until a few weeks ago and we've had some very cold winds, some very strong winds as well and it's really started to get desiccated and damaged. So I don't know if this will survive the winter or not. What I'll do is I'll insulate the stem a little bit at the base so even if the top half dies off, hopefully it'll re-sprout from the bottom. But this is how it's doing at the moment. The first year, not the best growth, but then I haven't really had it in the best growing location. It really needed a lot more light. This is a tree that likes a lot of light. It doesn't do, in, do that well in, in deep shade. So that's all for this update. I'll give you guys an update next year if this survives the winter. I'm not sure it will because in my part of the world it is a bit cold. And so I'll have a think about it. I might dig it up, but I'm a bit worried that its roots are established now and digging it up might actually cause more damage than, than leaving it and just hoping for the best. So. I'll leave the video here and I'll see you guys again next year with this plan if it survives the winter.